morning everyone. Uh, all the thanks have been given by Paikong. And at the moment I'm going to welcome some of uh, you, uh, which is the uh, students and some of from the industry uh, for this public lecture and from uh, for our friends from the Institute, we have Sandeep Singo and also Professor Megumi from Globis University. Uh, they will be conducting uh, another session of workshop later on. Okay, um, uh, I'm going to introduce you uh, about to this topic and also the speaker, which is uh, Junichi. Yeah. Uh, Junichi is a uh, uh, Pacific professor uh, of Jose Business School of Innovation Management currently, and he's also the former uh, president of Amazon Japan. As you probably understand, that Amazon is one of the biggest retail online retail industry in the world. And currently, he is the president and co-founder of uh, one of the uh, startup companies, uh, which is Kea Institute, uh, which deal with uh, global uh, financial institutions. Right? Okay, and uh, the topic that is going to be discussed today is, top, uh, is about platform strategy. Now, uh, when I hear the topic, in my mind, is uh, about games, right? You probably have uh, played a lot of games, Mobile Legends, League of Legends, and so on, right? Now, <coughs> uh, platform strategy, I, I believe, is actually uh, one of it came from games, which is basically an environment or a platform environment that deals with what we call a full technology. So whenever users or players needed something, all they need to do is uh, maybe purchase or uh, take it from the game itself. Right. Also, uh, by playing plat platform games, this means that you are actually playing an environment in which you can uh, conduct a full strategy. Yeah, that's in my mind. So, uh, but uh, later on, uh, Unity will uh, explain to you more in details about platform strategy, and that's why he uh, talk. It's going to talk about uh, some of the uh, big names, Apple's, uh, Google's, and so on, and all of them are actually conducting the uh, platform strategy at the moment. Okay, uh, that's from me, and uh, the session is going to be, uh, first, uh, Junichi will give you the lectures, and then afterwards, uh, we're going to have a question and answer session. So, please uh, take notes on any kind of questions that you are going to uh, give to Junichi. Okay, Junichi, the stage is yours. Okay, uh, good, morning. good morning. Thank you for, yeah, thank you for coming. I'm a Junichi, and uh, uh, I'm a, a president of... Uh, and the co-founder of uh, Kia Institute. Uh, this is the agenda I'd like to talk about. You know, uh, the are you familiar with a platform? By the way, you know, maybe going back to this. You know, I I basically this the the company like a uh, Google, uh, Apple, Facebook, Amazon. Yeah. Do you think that those are you know I recognize the platform players? You know, for instance, the you guys use Google, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, you search some words. And then the, you know, advertiser, you know, finds you, you search this word, you might be interested in this, you know, uh, products or solutions. So, basically, the Google connects you with uh, those, uh, the company who would like to advertise you, you know, those two, you know, a market are connected by Google, for instance. And the Google provides you the search engine for free, right? And the day basically charge uh, advertising fee on maybe auction basis. So it really depends. The you know, pricing strategy is very, you know, uh, innovative. And the same as uh, Apple, you know, as Google mentioned, you know, Apple provides you the games on through the iOS platform, like uh, you know, Google does Android too. You know, so I think today's you know those players leverage the external network effects pretty much. You know, like uh, Google connects you the all over these you know uh, the, uh, users, you know online users who are trying to search something find out, and then you know those information will be used for advertising, for instance. You know, so I think uh, the strategy is really changed when the, you know, according to Professor Eko, you know, 
the ELA 4.0. You know, it's a very different strategy you should think about. And by the way, the Japan is not so good at uh, you know, this strategy. So that's why I'm keep you know teaching at the business school in Japan. So let me move to the. So uh, yeah, maybe I skip this one. So uh, the, my background is uh, I. I did we talk about the Care Institute after that talk? So, uh, but uh, uh, I was uh, I have been working with uh, Oracle Japan for almost twenty years, nineteen years, including the, my days at the PeopleSoft. Uh, Oracle is a software platform vendor, uh, especially the Japan. Uh, they provide a database, but uh, they connect the IT vendor to you know the enterprises, the companies, uh, under the framework of special support uh, structure. So let the IT vendor to support on behalf of their IT department. So IT department needs an IT vendor to you know, use Oracle database, for instance. So I'm basically working in the you know, uh, platform company for almost 20 years. And also before that, I started uh, Amazon Japan. Uh, the Amazon Japan in my days was actually not a platform company, but uh, they grew and grew you know, after I left. So I want to be, you know, I, I said, uh, I made a mistake of why I shouldn't you know, stay, you know. And uh, then I basically started studying the platform, you know, why Amazon keep you know, growing. You know, they changed their business style from you know, the traditional retail business to the platform business. So that's what I'd like to, you know, uh, talk about. And also the, uh, uh, after the, yeah, I'm also teaching a, a digital transformation and a, a platform strategy at the a business school like uh, Fose and Aoyama. And also I graduated from uh, MIT Swan School. And my strategy teacher was uh, Michael Kusumano. Uh, Kusumano wrote a number of platform-related uh, uh, books, and also the my uh, sister advisor was uh, Eric Bridgerson. He was a uh, director of uh, uh, initi MIT Initiative for Digital Economy, and uh, so the this is the uh, conference uh, MIT usually organizes every uh, July. So I frequently met. Uh, I uh, meet uh, uh, Michael Kusumano, who is uh, still you know, active in platform strategy area, and also the Eric Brick Johnson. My thesis advisor is the director of this uh, uh, initiative. So uh, this was a, a picture of uh, uh, two years ago. The you might recognize this guy, right hand side. He's a uh, uh, Sam Grimsano, the former IBM uh, CEO. He's now the, I think, a chairman of a Center of Global Enterprises. And he's talk about, uh, uh, he made a, a keynote speech two years ago. And let me share some of his, uh, uh, you know, talk. Uh, this is uh, his first slide. I, I modified it a little bit, but uh, uh, the, in 1950 to 1980s, that's an uh, uh, era of manufacturing. The, Basically, technology and IT drives manufacturing a lot. Like so, Japan was so successful in that era, actually. And the in uh, 1990s and until 2008, you know, the demand shock happened. That was the era of finance. So many finance companies in the Wall Street and uh, you know, city in London are very successful. And now today. The ELA 4.0 is a network, uh, I'm a platform network, uh, data era. You know, everybody uses a smartphone, right? And I took picture and I share the, you know, your experience with a social network like a Facebook. You know, it's very different from, uh, you know, the um, decades. So, uh, in fact, this is the list of global uh, top 10 companies. You know, in uh, the first one is the uh, 1980s, the era of uh, 
manufacturing. You can see the you know uh, petroleum companies and the automobile companies like a Ford, GM, you know Chrysler was a was in trouble at the time, and also GE or IBM was listed. And uh, in uh, uh, 2005, uh, those you know uh, 1980 and 2005, I compared by asset and uh, look at the assets. You know the how in you know, mobile. Exxon Mobil was a uh, their asset value was uh, around 500 billion in 1980, and uh, the Citigroup in 2005 is uh, you know 1.5 trillion. How can you do that, right? This is uh, actually not the their actual owned assets. It's a uh, assets under management. So to some extent, they basically the connect between the borrower and the lenders and um, and provide the you know financial products and uh, make money and also the increasing the you know uh, assets and the so except the GE and GM all of them are finance companies in nine and uh, 2005 and then today that's a Q2 2018 uh, I use a market cap it's it's a because uh, uh, it's relatively easy to calculate, and the still the market cap value is a very high, and uh, you recognize the Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, Tencent, Alibaba. Those are you know top seven players are actually platform players. So, you know, without the platform strategy, you cannot be listed in this chart. So yeah, that, that's what I would like to talk about today. So uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, my day was a uh, beginning of a platform uh, of Amazon.com or Amazon COJP in my you know, experience. So I'd like to share the, my idea of when and how they start shifting their business from uh, detail to the platform business. So this is the uh, Amazon COJ, the Amazon Japan site today, this morning, my ID. So sorry about the Japanese, but uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is Amazon Echo, the uh, sort of smart speaker. I actually have uh, five speakers of Amazon Echo in my home. And, the, uh, and also Amazon Prime, uh, the, it's a prime services. They deliver very fast, and also you can see the uh, audio pictures, you know, those for uh, under the membership. So they encourage to, you know, join the uh, Prime membership. And also the Amazon Fresh is a sort of supermarket. And the video and the music is actually streamlined music. Uh, they basically promote Amazon Limited in this, you know, homepage. And also Echo and uh, uh, Alexa. So, and also the, it's hard to see, but uh, they basically recommend my books in my, you know, trace in the website. So it's a sort of personalized. So this is, a, uh, some of them are not, uh, you know, uh, all of the inventory now is not uh, owned by Amazon. Many sellers are basically the, you know, the trying to sell their products at the Amazon site because of the big you know, volume of our consumers at the time. But the, my day was just this. Just, uh, I was uh, just uh, in a bookstore in Japan, you know, online bookstore though. So this is, uh, uh, and also Japan doesn't allow to sell back, sell books with discount, uh, Japanese books. I think uh, any bookstore can, should sell the same book, same book title in the same price. That's a, a sort of the, uh, I don't know, it's not a uh, regulation, but it's a sort of a practices. And the, uh, and the, however, the, I actually the discount a lot for Western books. I think I basically, the, I think I killed many uh, foreign bookstores in Japan. Uh, because the my pricing was uh, maybe one third of them, so so uh, 
this is the uh, my business plan or business model of uh, uh, Amazon Japan. So basically, this is the uh, sort of a, a pipe business. You know, I basically the uh, source by wholesalers, not direct transact with uh, publishers or writers in, in uh, three days, decades ago, and the, no, sorry, 22 decades ago. And the, uh, the my value was a price on Western book <laughs> and the selection. I basically I source all books and uh, I don't have physical stores. So warehouse is, uh, you know, basically they have a huge stock and the all item was uh, managed and like a convenience stores today. So you can tell the which book is available in the inventory. You can you know, provide get the books when you know, that kind of supply chain information is basically properly calculated in this pipe model. And the uh, and also convenience. Like uh, if you order uh, by maybe five p.m. if you live in Tokyo, your books will be arrived in the same day, for instance. So. Those kind of the uh, business model, and the, when I left, uh, this was a model. Basically, I uh, expanded my item to the music and video, but the same, still same model. Uh, when the Amazon changed, was a uh, uh, Amazon today? Sorry, Amazon today was uh, like this. So, not only this, uh, the just follow the pipe, you know, uh, flow like this. Sorry. Uh, so the in those days, Amazon was a uh, very right hand side, and they always source from wholesalers. But today it's different. They basically the uh, it's a uh, Amazon provides the interaction between sellers and the consumers. It's not uh, through the pipe. Basically, the you know seller can source not for, from as an inventory of Amazon. So, so seller can sell you know, uh, their products from their inventory as well. And this is the uh, website for sellers. Even you are in, you know, uh, if you shop in Indonesia, you can sell products at the Amazon Japan site. And uh, if you go to the, the, the uh, link of the orange, uh, you can move to the, this. If you want to sell products in Japan, please you know follow this instruction. Okay. So now the you know it's a uh, without the Amazon calculate the, the demands or the you know which kind of, uh, product should be in their inventory for quick delivery. You know, seller can you know consider I want to sell these things. So now the basically the got this. So the platform provides you the uh, connection between uh, sellers and consumers, and also the those interaction is a really key of the platform. So uh, platform business is a uh, you know interaction centric between maybe two or. Hopefully, multiple segments are better, but uh, this is the very different, uh, you know, strategy you should follow. So, the the change was uh, the strategic alliance with Toys R Us. Are you familiar with Toys R Us? Toys R Us is not the Indonesian. Maybe that that's a toy shop. Uh, this was a very uh, strategic alliance for Amazon. So Amazon became the uh, the big this. Alliance changed the Amazon's system and the style. Before this alliance, uh, Amazon need to have a need on the inventory when they fulfill in the warehouse. But uh, after the uh, alliance with uh, uh, Toys R Us, all toy inventory is came from uh, Toys R Us, and it's not uh, you know the owned by Amazon is owned by Toys R Us. So Amazon basically uh, have an inventory on behalf of Toys R Us. So it's a, uh, called a consignee model. 
So now the you know shop, you know eventually shop can have a, you know uh, their products, which owned by uh, the shop as an inventory, you know post in the store eventually. So then uh, like this, you know uh, for this uh, sign, it's about uh, ten years ago. Yeah. Now the this you know the equipment. Uh, you know, some shops basically the post, and the it's a their inventory, not the Amazon. So they uh, Amazon basically gradually grew. Uh, sorry, this one. Uh, this is a basically the global expansion chart. But uh, if you look at the uh, you know products in a vertical way, so starting from uh, uh, physical media like uh, books, music, you know, well, music as a CD and the DVD, electronics, Toys the Baby, those are from Toys R Us, and the tools, hardware, home garden, apartments, sports, you know, those product categories are, you know, gradually increasing and then also expanded globally. So the, I believe the alliance with uh, Toys R Us changed the Amazon, uh, however the that move was not good for Toys R Us. Toys R Us filed the Chapter 11 uh, September last year. So it's, Toys R Us is gone even in the US. I think it still exists in Japan, but uh, you know, not doing a good business. So uh, in that way, you know, the Amazon still has a detailed business, you know, like a, uh, as I said, pipe-like business. But uh, Sena can participate in that Detail, detail side, and also Amazon has a, a service called Amazon Enterprise Services. They basically the, uh, prepare the site for the customer and manage the site on behalf of that customer. So this is the a sort of a, a their business model. Uh, so sellers and com customers are connected on the site, and the, some of the you know the. Uh, products are sold from Amazon.com, but the some sites are managed by Amazon and uh, their customers well. So, and also the, uh, this is the, their virtual cycle. So, one, this is the, their global growth strategy, a growth story. So, if you have a matching interaction, their business grow. For instance, the if you have a, a menu selection and the convenience, you have a better customer experience. So you want to come back to Amazon, and that includes the traffic. Then the because of the traffic, your seller seller basically would like to participate or you know post the your products at the Amazon site, and then the that includes the selection. Then you know the more attraction of customer experience at the consumers, you know, so site is growing global. At the same time, the thanks for the scale of economies, the cost structure will be efficient. So you can, you know, price down, you know, under the, you know, economies of scale. So then that also the better price increase the customer experience and then the increase traffic. You know, those virtual cycle continue and continue. So this is a really you know, good model. Basically, the, if you increase the interaction between sellers and consumers, your platform grow. And uh, because of, uh, you don't have to own your inventory. Now, you know, like a Uber or other you know, shared economy models, you can you know, increase your platform exponentially if we are really, you know, doing a good job. And also the, uh, as you probably be aware of, the Amazon now offers the Amazon Web Services, the IT services. Uh, I don't have, you know, have time to talk about a lot, but uh, basically the uh, detail is really price competitive industry. But the IT industry is a, as I know from my 20 experiences Oracle, you know, it's a, a very uh, good margin business. So if you 
do the same uh, price structure for the uh, ETF in IT industry, you have a better margin. So now the Amazon is uh, uh, becoming a profitable company. Just like uh, retail, it's really, you know, they basically invest for future and not so much profit. But uh, now the thanks for uh, AWS, Amazon Web Service business, it's, uh, uh, they are also becoming profitable. So uh, AWS is also one of our platform and they basically connect the developers and the users. So their you know, platform is uh, uh, more than two-sided. Now the developers are uh, one another element of uh, you know a platform. So they basically go and grow. That that's the story of Amazon. Uh, then uh, so basically the Amazon was uh, this uh, uh, starting from pipe business. And uh, but uh, as a retailer, it, they have a uh, you know big you know customers. So leveraging those customer base, uh, basically the values for producers or sellers, it you know is a uh, maybe access to the uh, big consumer base, and also easy to you know provide uh, your product on the site. So. That, that's the uh, you know uh, value for producers or sellers. For the consumers, it's no no change. Basically, the price, uh, selection, and the convenience. Those value you know keep continue. You know so that that then the interaction between uh, producers, in this case sellers and the consumers, basically the uh, scale the platform. So in the pipe business. You know, you need to uh, increase your values in the straight line in the pipe. But uh, in this platform you know, model, interaction has to be, you know, uh, does not have to be linear. So it can be grow exponentially if you design the model really, you know, nice. So then, the, oh, sorry, let me talk about the Apple. How was Apple? Apple in 1990 was really terrible. You know, uh, Mike, Michael Dell said, if I was a uh, president of Amazon, uh, sorry, president of Apple, I will s sell the company to somebody else. That was, uh, I think, in the Business Week uh, front page. But uh, now the Apple is the most, uh, you know, uh, market cap company of the world. And what happened? So uh, when you know Amazon, Apple was in trouble in 1990s, they are in the this kind of pipe business. Uh, sorry, it's not car, but uh, uh, supposed to be the uh, Apple, you know, the Macintosh. But uh, you know, very accumulated from stage to stage, and the and the not so much you know uh, network effect uh, Apple didn't have. But uh, the, uh, I think they changed the game from the uh, iPad. Uh, iPad was uh, originally a sort of uh, the pipe business. And so the, uh, it's a really product fast uh, uh, thinking and the really standard linear value chain. And the, uh, as a user, uh, basically, the iPod uh, music from detail, you know, as a CD and download it to the iPod. Then the, uh, you know, very, you know, uh, I was really happy when they released Windows version of our uh, iPod, but uh, I, I, iTunes. But uh, then the when the uh, iTunes store opened in I think uh, 2004. Uh, this kind of trigger platform. So uh, the Apple start becoming the platform to connect the user and the uh, content producer. Basically the, uh, the publishers or the media you know, companies. And then the Apple owns the, uh, basically the financial choke point, which is a iTunes store. Then the 
uh, Apple find user to find content, and sometimes the genius provides you the you know recommendation which you don't know about that you like, right? And uh, then the stronger network effects happen, like uh, the uh, Amazon's network effect. So they basically they took the same strategy for the iOS. You know, uh, iOS connects you, you and also the developers, right? So, uh, and also the uh, really good strategy of uh, Steve Jobs is uh, uh, he decided to use iOS as an operating system of iPhone. I think uh, Larry Ellison, the Oracle founder, was a good friend of Steve Jobs. And when the, uh, Larry uh, invited uh, Steve, Steve, that was probably the year of 2005, Steve mentioned, I probably the invent form using iOS. And that, that was a really the strategic move he made. So the, the iOS is really you know, strong, you know, having the uh, iPhone, iPad, and now Macintosh. And the, that's uh, the really uh, strength of the uh, Apple today. And the, in terms of uh, iTunes store popularity, I think uh, they opened this site, the, sorry, 2003 April. And the, I think uh, for almost two years, not so much network effect happens. But gradually, the, you know, the uh, pipe business moving to the triangular two-sided platform business. And then the, you know, the music and the content provider interlacks a lot. And then the, you know, the platform scale. And uh, in terms of pricing, uh, Apple basically the, uh, also made a strategic decision. They don't make uh, any uh, very tiny profit by selling the songs in iTunes stores. Basically, they decided in, in US, in Japan it's a 200 yen or something, but in US, uh, they decided to offer download one song for 99 cents. And they basically the provide a license fee to you know, content or basically the label for 70 cents, I believe. Yeah. And their internal cost was uh, 12 cents, so their actual revenue per song was uh, just 17 cents. However, the, this kind of pricing strategy is really key in the platform strategy. Uh, let me talk about this. So, uh, if the market uh, exists independently, you have a true price curve, and it works independently. So, basically, the quant Quantity design the price in terms of the supply and the, you know, the demand curve. And the, but the, if the, you design the market connected, you can change the game. So if, in this case, if in market one quantity will be increased by you change the price to really low, then you can make some money in market two, you know, because the uh, quantity uh, in market two, the quantity increase, then you can raise the price. So in two-sided market, so one side, you can make, you know, your service for free, then generate the, you know, the uh, scale in market one, then you can change, charge the more you know, price in market two. Like uh, Google is one example. Google offers the search engine for free. So everybody uses Google for, to search something. They, in return, in market two, the advertising market, they basically the charge with, uh, you know, using the auction style. So if the somewhat is really popular, it's really, high to take that you know uh, what for using you or leveraging your advertisement that that's the you know pricing strategy in the two-sided market platform and the as I mentioned you know uh, Apple 
is not a standalone platform. They basically the design as a the you know multi market you know platform. As a you know iOS is a you know really one example, and the they they basically the uh, trying to create the stronger network effect. And the uh, as a Professor Eko mentioned, you know, asked me to talk about Japan. The Sony was also in a good chance to become uh, Apple. You know, Sony had uh, uh, the mobile phone with Ericsson, Sony Ericsson, and they also provide the uh, Deja Walkman, right? And also the they, you know, Sony is a good at the video, and they also has a. Uh, motion picture company and the uh, games, you know, the PlayStation and also the uh, website and also the Sony has a, a digital media, you know, uh, digital book as well. However, the, you know, they made a, a platform as a standalone for each product. So, so the reality is that uh, Sony couldn't, uh, you know, became, you know, Apple today. Uh, however, the Sony is recovering, so I think they learned a lot from this mistake. So that that's the situation of uh, Japan companies in the era 4.0. So uh, as you know, the growth country, you also you know better to start thinking about uh, platform strategy to learn platform. You know, if you became a uh, uh, you could create a platform, you can scale your business, you know, exponentially. And the, I talk about the uh, Amazon and Apple, and the, those players is actually the, uh, they have a, a good asset, like a pipe business, and also they uh, successfully transit their business to the platform business. Right, and the many you know traditional companies like a GE, you know, are also trying to start uh, you know uh, platform business, like uh, uh, the, these asset heavy companies. But the platform business is uh, very different from uh, uh, pipe business. So, what platform strategy differs is uh, uh, if you are from uh, take a strategy class. You probably uh, learn the Michael Porter's Five Force. I, I, is there somebody who are familiar with Michael Porter's Five Forces? Not so much. You know, basically, the, this is a really traditional approach. The you know divide the your you know industry or your supplier and your client, your competitors, new entrants. Those five forces should be uh, you know carefully analyzed. And think about your, you know, uh, position in the game. Uh, however, the so 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 those uh, points are very, you know, uh, very key to success in pipe business. So uh, your goal is a protected market niche, emphasizing industry barriers, and the categories are very sharp and clear. And your weapon is a uh, uh, cost of leadership or product differentiation. How to differentiate is a really your key of your game. And the uh, unique resources you own provide a sustained advantage. So you should think about your competence and uh, you know, keep your competence stronger and to differentiate your business from other players is really key to success. However, the platform business are relatively, relatively different. So, you know, your goal is uh, how to increase the interactions between your market, you know, players. If you are working in a two-sided market, you know, how to increase your interaction between market one and market two is a really key. And the, in order to create or increase interactions, creating customer values is really important. And also the network effects, 
provides you the sustainability. Okay. And also the boundaries can be different, you know, uh, be out of or you know buried. And the you actually often intentionally the change the boundaries or you know the delete the boundaries between produce and the consumers to increase the uh, market size. Uh, sorry. And also the uh, competition is a multi-layer, so you you it's not uh, clear like a micro you know five process defined. And then the you don't have to you know uh, own your resources to develop uh, differentiations. In some areas. You just uh, own the external players to create or develop on behalf of you. So this is a related uh, uh, open API, which I will talk about the, uh, later on the Facebook. So, so in uh, open Java era, or network platform data era, you can start your business with a satellite like a Uber. So let me uh, let me talk about Uber. Uh, Uber is probably gone from Indonesia, right? Or South Asia. Uh, it's now the Glove uh, acquired, I think. And the are you using the Glove or Uber? I'm uh, sorry, the project. Project, yes. So the their value is uh, like this, right? Uh, the Basically the same model. So, if you are riders, you would like to have a you know more mobile uh, you know, cycle or cars near you, and you like to go you know, destination A. For for the drivers, you know they would like to know the where is the the riders or passengers are looking for car or motorcycle, right? And the Basically, the, uh, the platform vehicle is a, a ride-sharing application. Right? That connects drivers and riders. And the, for riders, it's easy to find the, the car or your motorcycle. And the, you just uh, you know, pay after the ride, and also you evaluate the drivers. Right? For driver, they basically the, uh, offer the, you know, this passenger would like to go to destination A. You would like to, you know, offer the ride. And if you pick, you just uh, offer the ride and get money very quickly. Right? And uh, also, utilization is really high, you know, comparing your taxi business. And the, because you, your, you know, audience will be really broad with uh, the mobile technology or you know, GPS. And the, so, so the interaction between riders and the drivers are also the scale the platform in this you know, growth strategy or the growth story. So if the maybe uh, if Gojek or Lightshare services have uh, more drivers. Let me start from the right hand side. And the, then the more drivers means uh, more ge geographical coverage. And, the, and, the, and then the, your peak is very really faster, right? Because of the more ge geographical coverage. Then you try to use the services. So demand increase. So if the demand increase, so that means more riders. So if you are a driver, you would like to participate in that uh, that share model. Then the more you know coverage. You know those kind of uh, you know cycle continue, and and also the for driver, you know their you know downtime, basically the uh, is basically you have a much more high utilization. So for the average, you can decrease your 
line price a little bit, but actually the you know, Uber or you know, Glob or Logic basically calculate on behalf of you. But uh, basically the you know fare is uh, much lower than the taxi services or, or other conventional services, right? So that creates another demand. So those you know basically the uh, budget cycle continue and continue. Then the platform scale like this. This is the example of uh, Uber. Uh, Uber started the uh, uh, Uber services in 2020. So then, before that, they, they just offer the dimension service using the Uber Block. And the, after UberX is available, their service is basically this, you know, scale exponentially like a platform using the network effect. And the, in the US, now the tox, taxi demands really decreased. And the, if you travel in the you know, US, you know, Uber is much more dominant. Now the Lyft is another alternative in the US. But, uh, you know, this is uh, changing the world. And the LiDAR application, uh, it may, maybe you're familiar with the Gojek or you know, the uh, Grab application. But uh, uh, in terms of uh, Uber application, they use uh, external, uh, you know, the uh, ecosystem a lot. So now, of course, they use a Google Map, and also they use a uh, uh, entry or PayPal for the settlement services payment, and also they use the uh, Twilio for the communication with the drivers between driver and rider. Uh, using you know those external, so they don't have to develop everything. They basically use API and they use external services. Now they use the many you know uh, the offering like uh, if you go to the some airline services, you know Google Ad is up here. You know, if you travel between airport to this destination, you should use Google. This is the price kind of. Uh, API is available. And also the uh, line share company collect the data. And they use the data for better services. Like, uh, uh, so if you use, uh, you know, accumulated data, and the, now the, uh, now we call it a big data analysis, but uh, such like a uh, uh, search price, uh, this is not good for the consumer, but uh, good for drivers. If the the uh, demands exceed the supply, the driver earns much more you know, money. Right? And also the uh, for this is also for drivers. Uh, the light share application provides the heat map. Where is the best spot you should wait for the you know, lighters? This is. Basically, from the uh, big data analysis, you know, this weather, this time, this is the frequency the you know lidar would like to pick, right? So this kind of uh, the data also changed again. This is this you know another element of the platform. By the way, uh, do you think uh, who is the winner of uh, lidar services? In Indonesia, maybe Glob and uh, Gojek? Yeah. yeah. How many people think uh, Gojek wins? How many people think uh, Glob wins? Oh, why Gojek wins a popular? <laughs> <laughs> Indonesia. Indonesia? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a <laughs> Singapore based versus an Indonesia based. So I think uh, it's really. Uh, actually, a tough business to become. You, you, in some, you know, criteria, your business can be. If you are winner, winner takes my all. So you are the only company in that you know, market segment. Uh, but uh, for instance, the uh, you. This is a classic case. But uh, the first 
picture, left hand side is uh, uh, the VHS recorder. The VHS versus beta, you know, the maybe the functionality is a uh, similar. You know, VHS is can record a, a little bit longer, and the image quality is a uh, probably beta max was better, but the winner was a VHS, right? VHS. I think the market share became 90, 95, and the VHS won, and the beta it dropped the you know, products, right? And the in that case, you know, it, video recorder was very expensive. It's uh, in I think uh, like uh, uh, twenty thousand dollars. You know, I think. Uh, you cannot have a two recorders in house, so it's called a monohoming. So, in case of a monohoming and also the strong network effect, like a, a video is also has a strong network effect. Like a, many video uh, are available, like uh, in the US, in, you know, uh, the uh, many video dental house like a blockbusters provide a lot of video selection and uh, if you know the beta doesn't have this you know title maybe people move to the VHS you know that you know that kind of network effect and monoforming provides you the you know winner takes all situation but how about the you know the uh, light share business Night show business is a, a sort of a multi-forming, right? You probably installed both Google, Glob, and Gojek, right? You have just Gojek only? Only? Oh, you have Glob, Gojek, Glob. But some people probably have a Glob as well, like me. Yeah, price might be different, and also availability might be different. And uh, in the US, same as for drivers. Many drivers install the both Lyft and Uber, and the you know sometimes Uber does a you know such price, then driver pick Uber request because they make more money, and same as a you know uh, riders or passengers, you know you know I think that they compare, so it's really uh, multi-forming you know the situation, and it's really hard to become. You know, winner takes all situation. It takes time. So, like, uh, uh, like this picture in you know, a credit card. You know, Visa, Master, Amex exist, and it probably exists forever. Right. So, however, it's really hard to become another you know credit card vendor right now. So, if we want to become large share service company, it might be a little bit late now. But uh, if the data share company appear to be the uh, good uh, network effect now, maybe they survive. And uh, it's a really the you know, need to work head to head competition. But uh, that competition might be okay the, if the market is still grow. But if the market matured, you know your growth might be you know, stopped. So that that's the situation. Uh, on the other hand, there is a switching cost concept. Like a like a beta to VHS, switching cost is very hard. You have to be purchase your favorite you know, movie title. If you had a, a beta, you know uh, decoder. If you decided to switch VHS, your beta library might be you know very unstable situation. You know so. However, and also the similar as uh, Windows and uh, Mac OS, iOS, you know, conversion. Now the, it's much easier. You know, my, Microsoft Office is basically the, can both support the, you know, uh, Mac and also the Windows. But uh, in 1990s, it's not so much good com compatibility. So if you are using Mac, you, you need a uh, you know, converter to Windows, and it was very painful. That, that's, Called the switching cost. So if you you know so in the white share business, switching cost is very cheap. You know you can switch to the Gojek or Glove 
depend on situation and the multi forming. So you know that doesn't create the winner takes all situation. So so uh, so I, I think uh, you know uh, data sharing games for market is a stage like a credit card companies market. That's my view. So uh, then let me talk about the uh, platform thinking. Uh, how to build platform with an uh, asset like you know, business like you. And if you are trying to start business, you know, how sh you should think about the you know, platform. So this is a, uh, the presentation the uh, Sanjit uh, Paul uh, Chandri at the MIT Strategy Summit 2000. I think 14. So uh, design principle is uh, basically the uh, focus on the primary interaction. Interaction between producers and consumers. So platform, the interaction is a very key component of your business. And also the in order to you know uh, increase the interaction, the values or the seed is the very key. So what is the good value or seed to you know increase interaction? So identify the seed is a very key component, and that seed means the minimum information or content required to start the interaction. And then also you need to determine the laws of producer and the consumers on your platform. How do you want to behave producers on your platform? How do you want to behave you know, consumers on your platform you know, to interact with the you know, values? And then, you know, build a platform to enable the interaction. So that's the design principle. So think about the interaction and the role of uh, producers and consumers, and then how to you know, maintain that interaction on your platform. So let me you know, go to the example. Let me start the mobile applications like Android and iOS. So, you know, in this case, uh, the interactions is based with the exchange applications. So developers develop applications on mobile, and the consumers, you know, basically download applications, App Engine, App, App Store, sorry, App Store, or the Google Play, right? And the so. And the basically the good applications will be the key, and the good application is a you know, good service like a you know, Glad or you know, Gojek, right? And also the some of the very uh, productive you know uh, applications will be the the key to users use the download the applications, and if you have a you know bigger user base. The developers would like to build the application for Android or iOS. Right? And another example is a, a crowdfunding. I think in the US, uh, Kickstart is a popular, and now they, they are coming to Japan as well. But the the to interact between the producers, you know, the project owner, and also investors for the project, the Project is a key of interactions. You know how many good project or interact. You know the very interesting or entertaining project is available in Kickstart. You know is a key. So if the much more investors exist in that crowdfunding, you know project owner submit the project in the Kickstart. If the other you know the crowdfunding has a you know, much bigger audience, they might, you know, uh, the 
submit the project on the other side. So that that's the the game, you know, of the competition. So then, how to build a you know platform is a uh, the first uh, magnet. You know, really attractive the you know interaction or you know, values is a key. So get the producers and the consumers on board. You know. And then the uh, provide a tool to maintain interaction or easy to interact. And the third is a matchmaker. The use the data to match the two loads. Like uh, I showed the the big data analysis in that show, you know, services. You know, like uh, not only such price, like uh, the heat map for drivers. That makes the much more pickup, right? And also much more utilization for drivers. So that, that kind of, a, you know, uh, three uh, magnet and toolbox and the matchmaker is a key. The, then first, the magnet, how to, you know, the uh, producers and the uh, consumers on the board. So this is uh, sometimes called a chicken and egg or chicken or egg problem. You know, the credit card is a really typical uh, example of chicken and egg. Right? So uh, like, uh, you know, if the, if you start a credit card business, you know, you also need to increase the both credit holders and the, the stores who take those credit cards. So you also, you know, increase both store and the users at the same time. Right? So you, in, in case of credit card, you know, you should better to increase the store first. Then otherwise nobody uses credit card. Right? And then the, if, at some point, when the you reach the critical mass, the platform, you know, or network effect start working, then the, you know, both are moving very fast. But, uh, so, chicken first or egg first, you know, that those chicken solving the two problem same time is really uh, important, you know, uh, game to play. So let me think about the how to solve the chicken and the problem. So one example is, uh, you know, uh, if you, you know, make the producer to the consumers, or consumers make the producers. If you can do that, that make the, you know, you know, the, you can, make the uh, two things, you know, one stone kill the two birds kind of a, you know, situation. And also the another thing is uh, if you acquire a producer, how to deploy the producer to, you know, uh, more, maybe friends of friends, you know, you know maybe uh, effect of, you know, the some uh, uh, social network is a good one. And the same as uh, consumers, how to expand your existing consumers to attract the other consumers? Or, you know, uh, how do you convert consumers into producers and they make the producers keep, you know, uh, good buyers? So, for instance, the Airbnb, they are. Uh, Interaction is, uh, you know, the initiated by the good room listing, you know, very attractive listing, and the availability of the rooms in your you know, travel plan. So they connected between hosts and the travelers, and the in often case, travelers became hosts. This is good services. I have uh, one backup room available. Let's make the, you know, that room is uh, available for Airbnb. So that kind of, uh, you know, the, uh, the, if you look at the bottom, the travelers 
became the host. And the host also would like to study the other hosts, you know, the room sharing, uh, you know, experiences. So those interaction is one of the uh, strategy to increase the the interaction. And YouTube, YouTube offer the good, uh, you know, tool as well. And also the some of the viewers, you know, move to the uh, creators of video. So in this case, video is a, a seed, and that increased the interaction between the video creators and the viewers. And uh, Twitters, you know, they designed the Twitters as a, you know, the concept of the tweet. So when you, as a leader, the tweet, that's a, also a part of a content. So that they combat the, you know, the that kind of interaction as a part of content. So number of retweet also basically the uh, content. So and also the uh, key producer is providing the good values is another element. And how to do that is uh, incentive design like uh, fun. Uh, fame and a fortune, basically money. So in case of uh, uh, incentive, incentive is uh, I think a, a spin-off company of uh, DIDD and the, basically they submit the challenging problems, often scientific problems, it's hard to solve. And the, basically the uh, problem owner submit the please help, you know, solving this problem. If you solve, I can you know, provide this money. And also, the, if the very hard category in a problem, it's a really fame if you can, can solve that challenges. So in this case, challenge is the seed to you know, uh, increase the interaction. And the, the money is the incentive for solver to, you know, participate in. So this kind of incentive works. And also the uh, trend race, it's now the famous as a t-shirt retailer now, but it's basically started as a t-shirt design in you know, a competition site. So so basically the, it's a fun to both. This you know, t-shirt design is really cool. And uh, that you know, basically the competition, you know, the prize is just a gift certificate, you know, for designer, and that, that gift certificate can be used for purchasing the t-shirts or, you know, as a retail store or trade dress. Uh, however, the, it's very fair to won that competition for design. And also they, you know, start making money if, you know, you are really also successful in the retail store. So this kind of uh, you know incentive is a really you know important to drive your interactions and solve the chicken and problem. Another strategy I'd like to cover in solving the chicken and egg problem is uh, I think uh, let me show uh, a number of strategy uh, which took by the some platform companies. The first is a uh, Follow the rabbit strategy. I think uh, the sorry, if you have a dog, you know you you basically throw the rabbit and the dog follows. You know that kind of strategy. So basically, the in this case, the the your platform value is a rabbit, and you would like to uh, make the dogs follow that you know value. And that increased the you know, interactions. So, so you demonstrate the values, stronger value of the platform to attract the new users. So the half post or Huffington Post started business in I think 2003. Initially, they didn't have any blogs and bloggers. So they hired the writers who make a high quality blogs and. Uh, 
that attract some you know users and who turn into the good bloggers, you know, start submit the uh, blogs in Huffington Post. You know, so that's you know basically they, they created the uh, rabbit by paying you know uh, writers, please write a good you know blogs in this topic kind of. Uh, after that, I think uh, Huffington Post stopped you know paying the writers, but now they you know they started you know paying some money to the good bloggers. You know, and, uh, you know, this is the uh, one of the strategy they took and uh, became successful. And another one is a piggyback strategy. It's a basically the you know connect with the existing user base from different platform. So PayPal took this strategy. Uh, PayPal became the uh, default of choice of payment of eBay after the acquisition by eBay and uh, in two thousand. So uh, then. PayPal became really popular payment services of the world, right? So this basically the uh, PayPal was a piggyback of uh, eBay. So and uh, that and now the you know uh, I think uh, PayPal separated from eBay now, but uh, you know that was really a good move for uh, PayPal. And another strategy was a seeding strategy. So encourage producers, especially producer size, to create good values by providing rewards, incentives, like I know right? So when Google started Android to bid against the iOS, uh, basically they started a best up concept contest, like a, a Android development challenge. And, uh, in total, they pay the five million, you know, and then they they still continue the this competition every year. So, and uh, another one is a, a single side strategy. Instead of uh, chasing both chicken and egg, just focus on chicken, for instance, right? And if chicken grew, then you know they they start uh, making eggs for you. Right. Then, so so focus business that benefits for the first set of users. Later, convert the business into the platform by attracting the second, you know, set of users. So, open table. It's a uh, basically the a sort of a restaurant listing and also restaurant reservation services. It's not part of business, but uh, when they started the business in San Francisco. Their services are just limited for the, you know, restaurant management or booking management services only. They basically they sell service to the restaurant, and they know, you know, the uh, consumer, you know, business are not available at that time. But uh, once they started, uh, you know, good coverage in restaurant, then they turn into the, you know, they put the uh, second set of user and became the platform services. And uh, another one is a big bang uh, adoption strategy. So use a you know strong market campaign at once to attract the you know uh, the users or producers at the same time. So if you have a really good uh, conference, who you know the both of the user and uh, you know. I mean, producers and the consumers, uh, the candidates participate in. Uh, good one is uh, the Twitter invested uh, uh, more than ten thousand to install a giant panel on the whole of the uh, the major uh, the conferences and the at the uh, South by Southwest contest. So. Uh, South by Southwest contest is a uh, it's really the uh, top edge contest, you know. So the many influencers participate in the conference. So the Twitter decided, you know, use 
you know, big money to present their services to all of the audience. So, and, and the, it, it you know, turned into real successful and uh, Twitter became the, I think, uh, best blogger, you know, uh, prize, you know, winner as well. So, and then after that, I think uh, they support the uh, Obama campaign, you know, and uh, now the, it's, uh, you know, uh, Donald Trump often uses, but, uh, you know, became popular. So, however, they, they started the, you know, services or the, you know, they basically the, uh, made them very high visible at the uh, uh, South by Southwest contest. That, that was a, a good strategy for them. Lastly, the uh, micro market strategy. So, you start a platform just targeting the micro market to ensure your service is really you know, high quality, good interaction, and a good uh, matchmaking services. So Facebook took this approach. They, they just uh, started business at the Harvard community and they expand to, to the, some college in the US and UK and high school. So they basically, the, you know, their target was uh, you know, uh, campus only until they are really, you know, okay to move. So, so they, I think uh, uh, Facebook started business 2003 and uh, they didn't go to the uh, dot com, you know, the more uh, wide open market until the uh, 2006. So at that time, the uh, myspace.com was much more popular social network services. So I think when you know Facebook uh, started the dot com services in 2006, I think uh, their popularity was uh, I don't know maybe five times you know higher than Facebook. However, the they basically maintained very, really, uh, you know, uh, they developed very really, uh, good services for close community. And, uh, and also another move was uh, uh, they decided to use uh, open API strategy. Basically, they uh, published the open API for game company to create some good games for you know, Facebook, and uh, some of the game had uh, some, uh, you know, uh, controversial things in the UK, for instance. But uh, you know, thanks for that uh, open API strategy, they exceed the MySpace eventually. My, on the other hand, MySpace developed everything by themselves. Facebook decided to use external ecosystem to develop the complementary services, like uh, games for Facebook. They don't you know, focus on the you know, non-core services. They just you know, focus on the you know, core business and let the external you know, ecosystem to provide something for them or for their you know, consumers. So then the, that, that was uh, you know, the magnet, you know, how to attract both producers and consumers. Now the toolbox, how to you know the make producers keep continue creating the good values and the make consumers how to consume the value. You know, the tools enable those actions is a really functionality you should have on the platform. So you should identify the who what is the key actions. What is the difficulty to produce those actions? Then you should make the tools to make those you know, actions more productive or more efficient. So the Instagram made the you know, tools to produce the good image on mobile, and also the it's really to look up, you know, easy to share among the you know, users. So those kind of uh, you know the uh, minimize friction in production and the consumption is a toolbox you should have on platform. So lastly, the matchmaker, 
use data to you know uh, connect the light producers and light consumers. How how do you do that? So you should have a big data and also have a algorithm you know to connect the proper you know the interaction among the producers and the consumers. So the data is a really key for producing the quality matching or matchmaking. And in order to do that, many you know platform vendors rely on the users and producers. That's create curation. When you use a graph or project, you basically evaluate the drivers and the drivers evaluate the riders, for instance. So to avoid the you know the drivers who are not you know uh, providing a good quality of services, you know. And uh, you know the uh, Amazon, you know the consumer uh, customer reviewers is a really uh, good driver, you know, to identify the good products uh, you like to purchase. And also the uh, this one is a property the Airbnb. You know, sometimes the narrative information is really important, and also criteria. In this case, the uh, the rooms, the uh, the information accuracy, communication quality, uh, clearness, location, you know, check-in <coughs> procedure, and the value, you know, price versus your experience to stay in that room. You know, those, those kind of uh, you know criteria might be easier for you to decide which room you should like to stay in the Airbnb. <coughs> That, that kind of a bold rate report is a good tool to you know make sure the correct data is stored and the those you know the high quality data will be used in your algorithm to con interact between producers and consumers and also trust you know you should make the trustful platform for producers and the consumers. So many platform vendors, in this case, uh, maybe Airbnb, uh, provide the host guarantees, you know, things, and also experience protection insurance, and uh, many uh, detail provider, you know, uh, provide the verified sellers. These sellers is very uh, high quality sellers, you know, for instance. So those, you know, the uh, correct matching our reason, curation, trust is a really key for providing the good matchmaking. So this, you know, uh, condition is also important to, you know, repeatable interaction or sustainable interactions. And those are for your data. If you have a good data, you can provide better services. But the, the data is not the uh, you know high quality. The even though the UR algorithm is really great, the outcome is not right. So design principle is uh, how to provide you the magnet between uh, producers and consumers. Often you need to solve the chicken and egg problem. You know when you start services. Amazon or Apple, they already have a good audience. You know, they have good, a strong user base. It's e relatively easier for them to convert the those users to the your platform business. But in an asset like business, you know, when you you start some new business, you, know, you need to solve the chicken and egg problem. And also, the you have to have a good toolbox. You know easy to use your platform for both producers and consumers. And also the you should you know accumulate your good level of data and make the good algorithm using the high quality data. And you know, in order to that you have a good curation and the trust you should build. Then lastly how to make money from platform. 
if you can have a good uh, you know, platform to have uh, consumers and the producer at the same time and uh, you know, have a high interactions, how to make it, how to make money to start. So uh, one way is a transaction card, you know, like a, a Gojek, Uber, Glove, Airbnb. They basically the, get some percentage. Like a Uber's case, they got a 20% of, uh, you know, light ship, light fare. I don't know about the you know Gojek or the Grab, but uh, they probably did take a twenty or twenty-five percent, and they you know that interaction you know if they increase interaction, your revenue increase. Same thing as uh, for the uh, event flight is a uh, uh, online event you know services, and the Etsy is uh, sort of uh, the uh, I think a Canadian company who provides you the uh, if you make a uh, hundred, you basically cost that eighty, and the uh, eighty basically they sell on behalf of you, and uh, you have to pay some uh, incentive to the eighty. And the Skillshare is also the uh, e-learning company, and if they deliver the e-learning services, it uh, Skillshare made some money from this some percentage of uh, e-learning services. Fees. Another, you know, approach is a uh, pay for access. So basically, in this case, the uh, producers pay for access to consumers. Like uh, uh, Facebook and Google uh, provides the online advertisement. You know, basically, the, uh, provide the premium access for promoted post. So if you made some uh, uh, promotion, your listing is a uh, you know top site, but uh, you know basically it's a paid advertisement is a listing, right? And also the uh, open table as a platform vendor, not not the you know restaurant listing services, restaurant management services, but uh, they basically the uh, if you pay premium. Uh, your restaurant is listed in a, you know, the top side. That kind of a degeneration services. And also pay for attraction, you know, basically uh, pretty similar. So basically the advertisement and also the job posting. If you pay some premiums as a monetizers, you know, basically the, uh, that attract the uh, consumers. You know, and also the sometimes the you can charge on tools. Uh, some uh, platform provides the uh, tools if you pay some premium, you know, like a uh, uh, and the and also slide share is a part of a, I think a LinkedIn, and if you down, try to download from a slide share, they try to you know. Uh, Ask you to upgrade your service to this level, and you know, that kind of things. And the LinkedIn also provide the premium level services. Vimeo is the same. They also provide the, not only tools but also some level of access is different. So through those, you know, uh, method, you can charge something from your platform business, but. Uh, but same, you know, you can, you know, but the key is as to the how to provide the uh, good values to both uh, producers and the consumers. So uh, the often fallacy, you know, you think uh, you know this is a business of a building functionality, but uh, in the platform, the key is a uh, interaction. This is a business of interaction. In order to you know uh, accept interactions, you should provide uh, very good values for both providers and consumers. And the uh, let me introduce the uh, platform manifesto, uh, the written by Sanjit Paul Chowdhury. Uh, this is a very uh, good summary. You know how the business is different from pipe. 
the, the in the platform manifesto, you know, the the ecosystem is the new warehouse. So like Amazon, you know, Amazon doesn't have uh, in everything in their you know as a in their warehouse as a, their own inventory. They basically need that sellers to put your you know products in the inventory of the warehouse. So the ecosystem is a new warehouse. And the ecosystem is also the new supply chain. You know, uh, so you can ask uh, you know new parts by you know some uh, maybe Alibaba is one of the two you know to pro find uh, some good supply. Or maybe uh, yeah, th those kind of uh, you know supply chain is also using ecosystem is one way. So I basically use uh, uh, some crowd services, you know, to ask some design, for instance. So it's also the you know new you know, ecosystem is uh, one of the resources as well. And then number three, uh, the network effect is the new driver for scale. Without the network effect, your business cannot scale. Maybe you can, you know, uh, the grow your business in a pipe business, maybe 30%, 50%. But if you can build the, the platform, which can scale is a platform, you know, your scale could be exponential by effect of the you know increase of a, a producer basically the uh, generate the increase of uh, uh, consumers and then generate the increase of uh, you know the producers so those kind of uh, synergy can be you know uh, grow the platform scale and the number four data is a new data like as i said you know big data analysis you know, without having data, you cannot have a better services. So data is a really uh, important, you know, currency. And the community management is a new human resources management. So in some cases, using OP, Open API, you rely on some development with uh, external communities. So by maintaining good community management, you can you know, make sure the, they do the right development for you. Right? And the liquidity management is a new inventory control, like uh, the Airbnb. You know, open house is a liquidity, but they you know, turn those liquidity into the important assets of their services. Right? And also, those assets are not owned by Airbnb. And the curation and the reputation are the new quality control. So as you use the in you know, a Gojek, you basically curate your drivers. You know, those you know kind of uh, uh, thing is a uh, you know con quality control for the Gojek. And the user journeys are the new sales funnel. So without the good user experiences. You know, you cannot you know maintain your you know, platform. Uh, distribution is a new destination. So, how to distribute your services is the you know the goal you need to think. And the behavior design is a new loyalty program. So, it's a related to user experience. If user experience is really great. You can, you know, uh, those customers are very loyal to your platform. Uh, data science is a new business process optimization. So it's a big, big data analysis. You know, that makes the your platform uh, services very optimal. Uh, social feedback is a new sales communication or new commission sales commission. Sorry. So. Uh, Good social feedback is a really move to the new cells. And the algorithm is a new decision maker. So you don't have to make decision by yourself. The algorithm 
is basically taken care of, you know, for the you know, time to time. And the real time customization is a new market research. So if you like to have some assumption to confirm, you just change the algorithm and to verify your assumption is right or not, right? So algorithm is yeah, the new decision maker. Uh, so real time customization is the new market research. <coughs> and the plug and play, on the other hand, you know, uh, the, in other, in other words, you know, uh, open API strategy is a new business development. So if you have a API available for other parties, if they develop something on behalf of your services, for to connect your services, you know, it's a, it, that kind of integration will be the you know, uh, business development. Lastly, the invisible hand is a new iron fist. So you don't have to, you know, it's not the, you know, the game of a command and control. You basically the pull, you know, in order to pull the values of the platform the key. If you have a strong values, you know, that basically the, you know, the, it's a sort of a, your invisible hand to, you know, attract your producers and consumers to your platform. So that's that's all I have. So let's move to the question and answer. Okay, okay, let's give him an applause. Okay, um, to sum it up, uh, basically, uh, you just stated that uh, platform strategy uh, involves a lot with interaction. So. Uh, business can build an ecosystem or environment in which uh, it will create values for uh, both customers and producers by creating interactions between those two. And Tunisia also uh, stated uh, three principles, which is the magnet and the magnet, toolbox, and match, uh, making. Now, uh, aside from that, Judy uh, and uh, his uh, friends in Kia Institute also actually has um, uh, utilized this uh, strategy or this platform strategy in uh, doing their business in Kia. Okay, uh, we still have around 30, uh, 20, 25 minutes. Okay, uh, shall we start? Who uh, wants to ask questions to Judy about? platform strategy or even uh, about his experience or also about KI Institute. Can you please introduce yourself and uh, direct the questions to the Trinity. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Taufik. I'm from Management Faculty of Economic and Business. Uh, so I have a simple question about the platform strategy. Uh, basically, I have working in uh, Startup. So, I think uh, a common problem in a platform strategy is how to ensure that the user are touched with our product, with our platform. So, I have so many uh, problems with the uh, consumer to make them trust with uh, our platform that we are offered. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Rajunit. I'm uh, sorry, I don't go to the report my question in English, but I'll try to report my question. Uh, I start work with uh, maybe industry, but cafe uh, last month, but we try to make a marketing to attract uh, any customer to our place, but in here, we, understand, we don't understand how to attract the customer. Should we build the platform? It's about the budget, it's about the money. It's not easy to make a platform. So, based on your experience, what should we do? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, your name is? Faili. Faili. Hey, Tuniji, uh, for the first session, I have a couple of questions regarding uh, how to ensure uh, trust of the platform itself. And that is from Topic and from Faili is uh, regarding uh, well, actually, how uh, 
to build a platform with maybe uh, constructed budgets and so on. So, can I start from the first one? So, I think uh, before I uh, worry about the trust, I think uh, uh, first, I think uh, uh, the values is a really key for your success. If your values are really strong, I think uh, uh, you might overcome some trust issue. However, uh, you should uh, uh, identify what kind of uh, you know uh, untrust or the fears the consumers have, right? And the hardest the good you know uh, measure to overcome that kind of uh, untrust or of fear of the consumers. So, so I, I think I'd like to know more you know, about that your uh, values and also the what kind of trust you are trying to establish. So I can explore now about whether to you know have a after the session or. I'm okay to have an interaction. <laughs> if you prefer the after the session. Uh, I think that uh, we are making a task is uh, sometimes we get uh, our platform to the party of the consumer. When we are offering our platform to the consumer, there are uh, uh, say that they are not trust enough with uh, our platform because uh, they are uh, they are tap tap uh, they are uh, usually using the old ways business with the uh, with the money with the transaction the old business and I think they have the problem because they are uh, not trust with our platform. Uh, they are not ready for the technology. What uh, the strategy to tackle that problem? I think this. But what kind of platform you are trying to? Uh, it's about the selling platform like uh, uh, if I mention like uh, Bukalapak or Tokopedia or uh, something else like that. So we are selling product to the consumer. So you're selling product, but you don't have an inventory. That's a seller's inventory. So in that way, it's a sort of platform. But what do your values for those uh, you know, sellers? Values. So access to the more you know consumers. Yes, uh, our values. Uh, maybe we have a good. Uh, a good uh, link, a good link with the uh, with the producers. So I think they are the values that we have to uh, introduce to the market. That we have a good uh, relation with the producer. I think I think too. Hmm. So what what kind of uh, you know uh, trust they don't you know is that a sort of a bland? Or they worry about the, you know, uh, flood or what is the? It, they worry about. They worry about. Uh, sometimes they say that they worry about the payment, the payment system. Payment system. I see. Sometimes they worry about the payment system, and then they worry about the the product itself that doesn't match with the actual product with the in the platform. Uh, so, so those are coming from uh, consumers. Yes, that's from consumers. consumers. So consumers has a concern about the payments. If yes. they pay, but they are not worried about. Yes. They, they worry about the products are really delivered. Yes, I see. I see. Mm. So, so it's your own, you know, website, right? And you need to build a good plan, you know, that make 
we are a trust for, for any consumers, right? And the question is how to do that, right? So maybe you might have uh, some uh, uh, good uh, uh, return policy or payment policy. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, you, you have to make sure the uh, you are doing the right business and the, make sure that you are really trustful for any consumers. So, I, I don't know the, you know, uh, if you became trustful uh, platform, you, you, you basically uh, certify the, your suppliers as a verified suppliers or something. But uh, this is the situation you are trying to build the your, you, you are self be trustful website or detail services, right? And I, I need to you know understand what kind of uh, uh, the uh, guarantee system we can offer, you know, you know practically. But uh, uh, that kind of uh, you know the uh, if product didn't deliver. Usually the uh, in Amazon yes. they they charge when the product is shipped. Deliver to the uh, you know basically logistic distributor like FedEx or UPS. You know the, the when the package is hand over to those you know uh, postal services then the the uh, they charge before the uh, those products you know are not delivered. They don't charge. So th that that is one of the payment policy you should think about. It. However, the uh, you also have uh, some uh, uh, the working capital to do so. So you need to negotiate with your supplier when you you know pay those inventory. Right. Well, you might uh, you know, consider that in your invent not not position the inventory as a seller's inventory to make sure the you can uh, offer the generous payment policy to consumers. So it's not uh, you know easy. I, I think you have to also negotiate with uh, your suppliers or sellers, you know, and then you can build the better uh, payment uh, services or transparency about payments to consumers. I'm not sure that that you know provides you the you know, clear answers, but uh, I'm happy to talk after this. And the second question, I, I still need to understand the, so, it's a, Talking about the budget constraint and the uh huh. We don't have a set amount to play in a new era to play based on the situation. You talk about if you want to play now, you play in platform. Should we play in platform too? Then we're going to have a budget. Uh, you, you are trying to build the platform, you know, from day one? It's uh, it's not easy. It is not easy business, you know. To to, it's a uh, as I mentioned, you need to solve the chicken and egg problem. So, you know, if you have a uh, enough budget, you are trying to solve the chicken and egg at the same time. But you, are, if your budget is limited, you should consider the uh, what is the right strategy to move and uh, the your budget constraint. So uh, I, I still also interested in the fact that you're trying to resolve as a chicken on a program. So I'm happy to also talk up, you know, after this, but uh, if you can able to talk a little bit in, in front of audience, I'm, I'm also happy. Uh, so this is about a new business. It's a new business. I build, uh, sorry, my friends build a new business. Mm -hmm. We get a problem. Until now, we have no sustainable customer. 
Iya, you know the cost every month is cost us. Nah, and then we think how to attract the customer. We we also play Instagram, Facebook. There's no big effect. Should we build a platform? And if we build the platform, that guarantee us about the successful of the business. Maybe about the budget we we will think in again. But if not, so what should we do in new era business? So, okay, uh, I think uh, uh, you should think about the platform. Uh, I think, uh, however, you cannot start your business uh, from as a platform business from day one. Yeah, uh, I think uh, you you need to uh, build the uh, some good uh, you know uh, value proposition. You know, strong value can eventually make you to the platform you know uh, business. But uh, without uh, you know strong value for both uh, two segment two market segments, you know, hopefully in order to make platform, you should have a. Uh, at least the two market segment, you know, like a producer and a consumer, for instance. So in, in my case, I'm trying to bridge a financial institution like a bank and the MSME business owners. You know. However, the, you know, from the day one, I don't think I can build the, I can operate as a platform it's just still the you know, need to work for the two market segment, you know, in a sort of independently. But eventually, we try to you know, move to the platform level. You know, in order to make the platform, you need some level of uh, uh, volume or interactions. So, in order to have uh, some level interaction, you need to think, you know, how to move and how to use your money carefully. And the and what is uh, and, and again the values you are trying to offer to consumers or producers are really key for your growth. Without uh, you know having a strong core values, you, you cannot uh, build the platform. So again, you know uh, think about the platform for future. And the facts should be the values you should offer. However, the, you also need to think about how to reach this, you know, you need to solve the chicken and a problem to reach the some critical mass. After you have a critical mass, that starts growing exponentially. You know, you know, Facebook is one example. You know, they started just a, you know, how about community, you know, services, and then grow their business to the Similar in a business case like a campus, you know, the student would like to know who they are, you know, they would like to see the, you know, the profile, and they might would like to, you know, dating, you know, for you know, girls and boys, for instance, and then they move to the you know, uh, social network services, and the same as Uber, Uber started uh, their business from Uber Black. It's not a uh, you know platform business. It's a pipe business. You know they they just uh, you know their driver is a certified uh, you know division drivers, and uh, their you know business do not scale. You know their you know uh, riders are very limited. You know celebrity, you know or maybe the the frequent you know uh, division users of the you know, hotels or. You know, Airports, and uh, but uh, they build a good platform based on that uh, pipe business, and when they turn into the Uber services, their services start you know, move and uh, grow, scale exponentially. So, but they initially think about platform, but they started from pipe business, and uh, they create the you know, good quality of services. And uh, ready to scale, then they started the you know, uh, trying to become powerful. So, so it's not easy. 
but better to think about platform level. Otherwise, you cannot, you know, this era is not the, you know, the time to think about the 30% growth, 50% growth. That, that's a maximum you can do in the you know, pipe business. That's linear. But uh, if you trying to build a platform to bridge producers and consumers or you know the market one, the market two, you can you know have a network effects that drives you your business to scale exponentially. So that's I you know strongly recommend if you think about a new startup, you know think about the platform business. However, the your strategy has to be not platform business from day one. You need to think about how to build a platform. That's what I'm doing right now for care of this Okay, uh, thank you, Tiviji. Uh, I hope uh, Topic and Vedika get their answers. And uh, since we only have around five minutes, uh, for the second session, we cannot have one question. Uh, any questions? So you can actually consult with Trinity and Team KI uh, regarding uh, startups if you want to start your startups, either uh, non platform based startup or platform based startup. Yeah. Okay, um, our session has ended, I think. Thank you very much, Junichi. Um, but before that, uh, let me give you a concluding remark regarding uh, platform strategy. As we know that, uh, as Junichi stated in his lecture, that platform strategy is the new strategy in uh, the way of doing business uh, nowadays. But uh, please uh, do uh, have a reminder for yourself that a platform strategy cannot be started from uh, scratch, which means that you have to have a value that you have to be uh, proposed to. Uh, so, for example, uh, I'll take an example of uh, in this case, in, in, I think he's actually the producer, right? So he's, he and his friend owns a cafe, right? And he tried to uh, promote their product. So if you uh, want to uh, build a platform, that's a bit difficult because uh, a platform is basically creates interactions. So you have to create the interactions first before you become a, a platform-based uh, business. Okay, and uh, Felici also has that is own experience in uh, building its uh, own startup uh, using the platform strategy and I think it's starting and uh, it's going to be a good business uh, for him and his team. Okay, uh, that's my concluding remark about the, about the platform strategy. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'll be giving the forum to uh, the MC now. Thank you. Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.